close your eyes and think, what does God look like? Does he have a white beard? Does he sit on a throne? Or does he look like something else? We'll talk about the physical features of God on this episode of Inverse. Hey guys, my name is Justin Kim and you're on Inverse. In the studio with me is Israel and Jonathan and Callie and we're in the midst of studying the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to encourage you to go to hopetv.org slash inverse. You can look at last week's episode and see how we get into this wilderness experience. So hey guys, Hi. welcome back. Hey, welcome thank back. you. And we are in Deuteronomy. One of my, I don't want, I, I would not say it's one of my top 10 favorite books of the Bible. <laughs> But after last episode, I mean, it's, uh, we're getting there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, every time we do study a book of the Bible, it, it tends to lean to be my, my favorite. So uh, we'll get into the Bible. We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. But before we read the Bible, I'm going to ask that uh, we pray. Jonathan, if you can help us out. Sure. Let's pray. Father, we are here again to open your word, to grow from your word. And Lord, we just want to invite your Holy Spirit. Teach us. Uh, what we need to learn today, not just us, but all those who are watching mm -hmm. and studying with us. Mm -hmm. And I pray that as we journey through this book of Deuteronomy, that we will grow closer to you and have a more committed and more fruitful relationship. We thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse... Uh, man, it's a long chapter, huh, Kelly? <laughs> it it's is. about 49 verses. You can do it if I don't you think want we to. have enough time for the whole 49 verses. I'm so here. we'll start from <laughs> verse 29 okay. through 31. If you can read those verses for us. All right, verse 29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress, and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore to them. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of the apex of, of, of that passage. Mm -hmm. um, we're in chapter 4, so right after chapter 4 is chapter 5, where the Ten Commandments are given. We're going to look at that in the next episode. Mm -hmm. But you look at Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, are the two times where the Ten Commandments are mentioned. One emphasizes Jesus's or God's creation. Jesus also created, according to the New Testament. Uh, but also, the Deuteronomy 5 emphasizes his, his redemption, so creation and redemption. Mm -hmm. But right before this giving of the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. we have <laughs> chapter 4, and God kind of gives us kind of preface or kind of his plea before his grand opening. Uh, what's going on here, uh, Israel? Yeah, as we've mentioned before, the book of Deuteronomy not only uh, not only speaks of the law, mm. but it also speaks, the book of Deuteronomy not only talks about law, but it also talks about life. It talks about instruction. It's, it's, it's really more than that. It's a book of experience, a book of life, mm. stories that are retelling the experience that God has had with his people. Mm -hmm. Especially in, ch uh, in chapter 4, he begins by talking about in verse 7, you know, for what great nation is there that has God, Yahweh, so near to it? Verse 8, what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous oh. judgments as are in the law, which are set before you this day? Mm -hmm. so when, when we're talking about the law, it's, it's more than just 10 commandments, more than just regulations, but it's talking about how is it that a person can really experience happiness, right? Mm -hmm a perfect and a great life. Now, what, what, I, what I appreciated about that setup that Moses gives us in the, in the beginning of chapter 4, he's talking about the comparison between great nations and the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And this appeals to human nature, right? Because what we want more in this life than anything else, we don't want a great God, we want to be great ourselves. Mm. And then he's, he's, it's kind of like he's bringing to mind, look, all of these nations, as great as they are, as powerful as they are, as wealthy as they are, they're missing this one thing. Mm -hmm. And that is that they don't have God near to them the way you do. And so even though you might be a small nation, even though you might look like a feeble nation, even though you mm. might be at the bottom of all the nations, you have this great privilege yeah, yeah, of having the great God of the universe. Yeah. And, and, and so this is something that kind of that is portrayed. And then he says, 
What makes the difference, though, mm -hmm. between whether or not you will appreciate God or you will a, a great God or you will appreciate a great nation? And then it becomes, uh, as Kelly read, it's an issue of the heart, mm -hmm. right? If you want God near to you, if you want the great God, if you want to appreciate the greatness of God near to you, then you will have me. You will when you seek for me with with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate uh, that introduction, and then he, then he goes into verse fifteen into this kind of section on bewaring idolatry, mm -hmm. not to reproduce God, uh, reproduce mm -hmm. Him in a physical feature, which should, should go to the theme in the beginning, mm -hmm. the, the opening of the show. Does God have physical features? Why does God mm -hmm. not want to be reproduced? What's so bad about idolatry? Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> you just put in a spot there. Yeah. <laughs> well, idolatry is as old as humanity, really. Um, it is every time humans try to make something that, you know, God clearly instructed not to do or to do, mm -hmm. and they just do their own version of it, that is really idolatry. Mm -hmm. So, like, you see it already right in the beginning, um, you know, with Cain, when th he did a sacrifice that was not, he did a sacrifice, that's what God asked for, but he did it according to his own way. Mm -hmm. And so, he, he formed the sacrifice in his own image, so to say. He said, no, nah, I want it in my way. Uh, but God is saying, I have clear instructions, I've, I've clearly showed you the way to go, and just follow my way. Now, when it comes to his, you know, you're asking about his physical features and those kind of things, we do know from Genesis, and we did study this, you know, numerous times on inverse, um, that God created humanity in his own image. Mm -hmm. Now, that, of course, can be interpreted in many ways, but it does, you know, throughout Scripture, there seems to be, um, it does allude to the fact that God does have a physical features mm -hmm. that he can be seen. I mean, Moses saw, you know, God's face back, face, yeah. it, well, face to face, and oh. then his back, and then oh, his yeah, hand. Yeah. And so there the, the seems to be a physical, visible uh, presence of God that, that, that can be, you know, seen. Whether that is always the way he looks, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, or if it's only when he interacts with humans, we don't have all the information mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be some kind of form that he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kelly. And going to one of the questions that you asked about why idolatry, uh, mm. in this case of creating these images, is mm -hmm. wrong, is because we cannot create an image that accurately represents God. Mm -hmm. We can't conceptualize Him, even if we're not even talking about physical forms, just like you can't confine Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he even said, like, yeah, He'll come and dwell in the temple, but like you can't confine Him even to a temple. Mm -hmm. And so, to say this is what God looks like, or I need to go to this house and then see God. You're bringing down his physical presence, you're confining him to a place, you're confining him to an appearance, you're confining it to an experience mm -hmm. that you control, and it even just takes away who God is. Mm -hmm. And so you're just like, God, God is all these things, and God is so transcendent, but then mm -hmm. you're like, oh no, no, actually he's just like in my pocket, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. like he's in my living room. Yeah, 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 no, I, I think that, that la last line I really appreciate. In our last episode, we looked mm -hmm. at how that God is a relational God, and as yeah. cliche as that sounds, it's still true. I mean, it's <laughs> sticky, there's time element, there, there needs to be investment, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just, em there's, it's emotions involved. It's quite complex. Mm -hmm. It is. And in that complexity, for us to reduce that complexity to a mere, you know, Talisman. artifact, an yeah. object, Trinket, or, yeah. or whatnot, and then put it in your pocket, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you're, you're just, you've just kind of reduced this complexity to something that you can ultimately control. Mm -hmm. And the danger is to even impose yourself upon it. And, and, yeah. and there's different versions that we do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's, uh, piggy, piggybacking on what you just said, there's two things that strike me in terms of the problem with idolatry. And one of them is that salvifically it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. The whole story of creation yeah. and redemption is the purpose God needs to make us into His image, mm -hmm. to restore in us the image of our Maker. And so, and humanity's attract is the opposite. Right, We're trying to create all this divinity yes. into our image, our image, and then yeah. try to be saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, in a form, idolatry is making God into the image of man, right? Yes. And that just won't work salvationally because we take God, we make him in our image, and then we say, "All right, you're going to save us." So that doesn't work in terms of salvation. Yeah. The other reason is because it doesn't work relationally either, yeah. right? When we talk about God being a jealous God, I often had problems with that. Mm. Uh, like, Verse you know, 24, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but oh, I wanted yeah. to get in there. And so I, I had this problem with God, like, God, why are you so jealous? Why are you insecure? What, you know, <laughs> until, until I got married, right? And, and then once you're married and you love someone, everything Your changes, jealousy right? Goes out, out yeah, of it's like all of a sudden jealousy <laughs> is important, right? And it's not that I don't trust my wife; it's just I don't trust everyone around my wife, right? <laughs> and so, um, you, you know, you get to a point where where I could never imagine in in my life I could never imagine myself being comfortable with someone 
kissing my wife the way I kiss my wife, right? With someone holding my wife the way I hold my wife. Mm -hmm. Relationally, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that no one can hold her, no one can kiss her, whatever. It doesn't mean that, but you can't do that the way I do it, right? Mm -hmm. That is reserved specifically for me. Why? Because I'm a jealous husband. And so jealousy works within the context of relationships. Yes. It's mm -hmm. essential for the, for the stability mm -hmm. of relationships. And so idolatry is, it is it breaks down the relationship that exists between us and God because it's a form of it's a form of adultery. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not just about like oh, you know, if we make an idol and, and then we worship that. And we, I really mean God, but I need something physical. It's not just that God is upset about that alone. It's also that He is concerned for us because He knows that we are missing out on the. You know, you mentioned relationship and salvation. He, we're missing out on that um, healing process that He's offering in that relationship. Mm. He's trying to restore in us the image of God. He's trying to restore us from this brokenness that we are, the broken mess that we are, mm -hmm. into, you know, uh, into complete healing. Mm -hmm. That's it's a very grace-oriented, uh, rather than God just being petty. Like, yeah, he's not oh, just you, made another, you drew another picture of me? Right. Oh, you know, no, 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 he's like, you're missing yeah. out because yeah. you're trying to self-medicate by making your own little thing yeah. instead of, taking the medication that I'm offering, which is the only one that can help you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I think you just said it actually, but I love to harp on the non-arbitrariness of God, mm. especially in the Old Testament, because mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, that's when we often say he's arbitrary or just being petty. But it's exactly right about idolatry. The reason God doesn't like idolatry is not because he's like, oh, I don't like, I don't like your image. I don't like it. Mm. <laughs> it's just like he's like, no, you're, you're missing the point. Mm -hmm. We can't actually have a relationship if you do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not, it's not concerned for himself because God knows who he is. God isn't like, oh, you drew me a bad picture. I don't like it. Like, that is not what I look like. He's just like, oh, you're going to fundamentally misunderstand who I am yes. and actually who you are if you do that. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather you not do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want, I'm trying to bring in this, this element of, of what you just read before earlier. In verse 29, mm -hmm. it says here, From there you will seek the Lord your mm -hmm. God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all mm -hmm. your soul. And it's idolatry is a great evil. It's a great temptation, not for the pettiness that humanity is just chiseling a little statue, mm -hmm. but it, it it prevents us from seeking God with all of our hearts. Because yes. mm -hmm. we're like, oh, my, my God's right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I've, I've only used 1% of my whatever, just, <laughs> just and, and it reduces that relationship, reduces that mm -hmm. experience altogether. Mm -hmm. um, when we come back after the break, we're gonna look at this, how does heart religion, real spirituality and idolatry, how are they connected? Why is what's so wrong with them? And how do we commit idolatry on a daily basis? This is Inverse, I'm Justin, stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we're in here in the studio and we're looking at the topic of idolatry in the book of Deuteronomy. And God actually repeats this over and over and over again. And we establish that idolatry is not merely the creation of image that God is pettily angry with, mm -hmm. but there is a deeper heart religion, mm -hmm. heart problem going on here. Deuteronomy chapter 4. And I want to ask you guys, uh, let's, let's look at the verses, uh, verse 29, 30, and 31, of which Callie read, and connect those two things. Real heart religion, real sincere, uh, covenant uh, experience mm -hmm. that we've talked about a couple of seasons ago. You can go to hopetv.org slash universe to look at that, <laughs> that, that season. But how is, how, what's the connection between that and idolatry? Mm -hmm. Israel and then John. You will seek the Lord your God and you will find Him if you seek for Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Mm -hmm. we, we have the guide in, in, in as to how we are able to communicate and to find God. Um, any other guide outside of that will be a limited guide and might end up leading us to the wrong conclusion or to the wrong destination. Often with, uh, you know, when it comes to relating in our, in our context today, one of the biggest problems that we have is texting, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in, we're in a room, the same room together, and instead of having a conversation together, we're texting. There are so many problems with texting, right? Just this past week. I was uh, Tell us, Uncle Israel. Yeah. 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 Grumpily, yeah. grumpily yeah. complaining. Yeah. 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 I had to text someone yeah. and ab about this very important situation that we were dealing with. Yep. And she's married to another man, right? Yep. And it's like 12 o'clock at night, but I just got done with work and it's an emergency. Yeah. So I text her, I'm like, are you awake? She <laughs> says, yes. And then my next text is, can I call you? <laughs> yes. And, I'm, and, then, and then so I call her up. 
the my, first thing my. the first thing is the first thing I have to say is like, hey, can you make sure you tell your husband what this is about? Yeah. Because the context yeah, 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 yeah. doesn't depict <laughs> yeah. the relationship. Are you right? awake? Yeah. It's yeah like, dude. are you awake? Can I call so you? Crazy. Yeah. And so and so that's the problem with idolatry is that it does not lead down to a real conversation, even though those words are there. Are you awake? Can I call you? It's not a clear depiction of the relationship okay. or the purpose of our okay. conversation. Yeah. And in, mm -hmm. in, in a similar way, idolatry is that way. Okay. We're, we're having a conversation which in the text alone can be very mis misleading yes. in terms of what we're actually trying to communicate mm -hmm. or accomplish. Okay. And so idolatry, even though it's there, even though what we're reading is real, even mm -hmm. though that actually did happen, it leads us away from the real thing, mm -hmm. the essence of the real thing. And so mm -hmm. God says, the way in which you find me is not through text. The way in which you find me is not even through a phone conversation. The way in which you find me is through an intimate connection yeah. with me. That's mm -hmm. the only way you're going to find me, which requires the investment of your whole heart, a total mm -hmm. commitment to the relationship. So it's, it's, it has all the forms and structures and the elements, but it's missing that crucial piece of the heart, mm -hmm. yeah. of communication, yeah. of heart-to-heart -heart communication. And the heart, you know, why the heart? The Bible talk, you know, talks about this all the time, the whole heart, the whole soul, everything. The heart is, you know, from a biblical perspective, this is the core of your humanity. This is where you make your decisions, your emotions, uh, all that is there. And this is where, you know, you, you you make your covenant with God or your covenant with something else, whatever it is, God is saying, the center of who you are, I need that to be connected to me. Why? Because when sin entered you know, our lives, yeah. it destroyed our heart. It destroyed mm -hmm. our ability to make the right decisions. It mm -hmm. destroyed our ability to, uh, to find solutions. Um, and so because the heart is fully sick and deceitful, as the Bible says, mm -hmm. God says, give your heart to me mm -hmm. and then I will fix it. But idolatry is when we take um, the things that only God can provide and we try to seek them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We say, you know, uh, I have this issue of, you know, I don't know, no self-discipline or, you know, I lie or whatever it is. And I'm saying, I'm going to try to follow some program, some routine that's going to fix it. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's so many services and products out there that, tr that you know, promise you these things. But um, everything but the heart. Exactly. Right. And so it's, every, it's the outward forms, but mm -hmm. it does not transform the, the core of where it all stems from, which is the sinful brokenness in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you saying, Jonathan, that in this, in this commercialized mm -hmm. a world that we live in, every commercial, every product, every, mm -hmm. every advertisement that's on social media and it disrupts my social media experience <laughs> and it makes me just upset that they're, they're tracking me with all my... All these things, <laughs> are they all forms of idolatry in our modern age? It, it can be. If we go to those things, to these products, to try to um, make up uh, or try to do the things to our heart that only God can do. Mm -hmm. God has put eternity into our hearts mm -hmm. and He is, there's cravings that our hearts have, our broken hearts have mm -hmm. for healing, for restoration, for love, for, for transformation. Mm -hmm. Industries around the world, they know these things about the human needs mm -hmm. and they capitalize on and it. And tap into that for yeah, profit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there might even be solutions that are temporary, yes. but long-term solutions will not happen until God has a whole heart because He's the only one that can actually heal and, yeah, and yeah, restore. Yeah. You know, I think in our modern days, we, can, we, we talk about, we kind of talk about idolatry and, uh, you know, immediately when I close my eyes, I think of idolatry, I think of a statue, right? Yeah. It's just, you know, and like, <laughs> oh, that's so primitive. That is so pre-modern. We're in the post-modern age. And do we still have idols today? You're saying yes. yes. What, let's make that a little bit more real. What are our tangible idols that, mm -hmm. that our generation uh, is currently being subsumed in? Kelly. Yeah. Well, I think kind of broadening the definition beyond statues, no offense, but I feel you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> is just placing a higher affection on something else. Okay. Mm, yes. uh, so you can, the crazy thing is you can uh, be struggling with idolatry and still love God. You just love something more mm -hmm. um, and you prioritize something more or you, mm -hmm. you know, seek their help more. Mm -hmm. There have been times where, and you can also struggle with idolatry with, with objectively good things, mm. like a relationship, romantic or otherwise, or just certain people or certain mm -hmm. experiences where you're stressed or you're just not doing well and you're like, how do I feel better? 
I go there. Mm -hmm. And these th and that that is idolatry because you are experiencing something that only God can can fix, only mm -hmm. God can heal, mm -hmm. and instead you go to something else, mm -hmm. which ultimately doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But that even just that experience is an idol mm -hmm. is idolatry. Mm -hmm. I heard somewhere where someone's talking about the idolatry of the Bible, mm -hmm. and I was like, "What are you talking? How are you, how are you going to be saying the Bible? Because <laughs> the Bible is like the holy, the holy, holy, the holy Bible." And he entitled it "Bibolatry." Yeah, bibolatry. <laughs> bibolatry, and just taking the Bible and mixing it with yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, we do. I do have tendencies for that. That that one day that I'll just read a Bible verse, mm -hmm. right? And without a relationship with God, without even subscribing, I don't, I don't surrender my heart. I read my Bible today. So that this magical incantation <laughs> will now protect me from all bad things. <laughs> and you know what? Let me just carry my Bible and put it in my bag. I won't read it. I don't see this as a portal to a relationship with God. Just having the Bible in me or under my arm bless me, right? This can be an mm -hmm. object. It falls in that category. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A good thing. I think another way, too, that I, I see a lot more uh, with my generation is seeing the Bible as a self-help book. Mm. Mm -hmm. of like, this is super profound, really great counsel. Jesus, you really lived a life. I'm going to now go apply that. I'm going to apply that yes. to my mm -hmm. life. Yes. And it's not about a relationship. It's about, and it, it almost sounds good, right? Because like, I'm just seeing Jesus as my example. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm just going to follow after mm -hmm. him. Like, so that sounds old really great. So yeah. old covenant. <laughs> it is. Right? Like, this so is good. Covenant. I'll do it. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. another way that we can create idols is even with God, we can say, I'm going to create God in my own image. And not just I'm making a statue, but I'm going to pick and choose what I like about God mm. or what I want him to be like. Yeah. And it's driven from my sinful heart. I'm like, you know, I, I want God to be this way. I don't like yes. it. A lot of Christians, they throw out the Old Testament like, I don't like the Old Testament. Yes. You know, they might not even have read it, but someone said it's bad. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, well, I'm just a New Testament Christian. And, and so they're really only seeing half of God, you know? Yes, or, yes. I mean, they see, I know Jesus and all, it's beautiful, right? Yes. But Jesus is building on all the Old Testament yes. stuff as well, as, as we have seen in our covenant study. So uh, making God in our own image can even happen, uh, you know, w with Christianity, it's yeah. with our beliefs in the Bible, by saying, I'm going to select this, I don't like that, I'm going to throw this out. In my worship experience, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to do it this way and not let the Word of God and our relationship with God inform it. And one way of, of, of going away from idolatry is to say, I'm going to not be afraid of the things that I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to let all these things create a beautiful picture, the complete picture of who God really yeah, is. Jonathan, I mean, I'm just thinking while you were talking, you, ha you have people who have these two experiences, yeah? yeah. There, there are people who deny the, the justice, the judgment, the law, and they mm -hmm. want just a grace-based God, mercy and compassion. And, mm -hmm. and then you have also the flip side. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I don't want that mush. I don't want the love of God. Justice. That's all easy stuff. I want judgment. justice. I want obedience. <laughs> and then they create God in mm -hmm. their own image, according to their own personality, their own temperament. Yeah. And then it's an easy God to worship in that mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Callie and Israel. I just want to say a quick side comment on something Jonathan sure. said, and that is just the fact that verse 29 is 29. in Deuteronomy mm. and it's in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Because like Jonathan said, I think a lot of times we're scared of the Old Testament mm -hmm. because we haven't read it. Yes. Um, and the best way to overcome that is, <laughs> just, is just, just to read it. And that <laughs> yes. sounds so mundane, but like... Or, or, or read it and not fall asleep through it. Or not read yeah. it and check, and check off like, oh, I did it. Uh, and but, just don't yeah. let other people be like, oh yeah, Deuteronomy, you don't need to read that. Or like that book, there's no gospel in Leviticus. Yes. Like, yes, there is. Yes, yes. So just, just read it. Well noted, and you'll well see noted, it. well appreciated, well yeah. appreciated. When you're as we're talking about idolatry, one of the things, you know, the question is, what are things that are idolatrous in our generation? I'm thinking to myself, what is there that is not, you mm -hmm. know? And I think it boils down to perspective. We often have the perspective, and the question that we have to ask ourselves is, have we found God or are we finding God, mm. you know? And, and a lot of times we, we approach our relationship with God as though it's a past tense, we've already found Him. Oh yeah, I know God, I found him already. My God, <laughs> okay. you know, he's, he's, the, he's the manly man. He's got a gun, he will kill people, he will defend, he's the great defender. Oh no, no, that's not my God. My God is the social justice Jesus. You know, and, and we, start, we start taking Jesus aspects, as you already eloquently said, yes. and we make them in our own image. Mm -hmm. the, and and that, that, all of these things, the fact that we have found God mm -hmm. will inevitably create idols, mm -hmm. right? That is the sure path to idolatry. Because God says, no, if, you're, if, you're, if you have already found me, if you've already finished me, if I'm a finished product in your mind, you've already made me into an image. You've already made me into an idol. Whereas what is necessary is the opposite, mm -hmm. that we will continually find God because we are finite people. He's an infinite God. Throughout the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. we will be finding Him 
more and more. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way for us not only to prevent idolatry, but to also have God's purpose established in our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I like what you mentioned earlier. You said in the side comment that, you know, what has our affections? And I think for all of us here and the viewers as well, you know, I think everyone here, you know, we, we, we believe in God and we want to follow Him. Um, a great way to see where do we stand in this discussion about idolatry is what does have, uh, ha have our greatest affections. Uh, you know, and we can pray about it. We can say, God, show me, um, are you really the most important thing in my life? Mm. Do you have my entire heart, my entire soul? And God will gladly help us with that. Like mm -hmm. He's not against us. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that we ask ourselves this on a continual basis because we easily slip into these, into these idols, yeah. even having God as a part of our life, but mm -hmm. then something else is more important. Yeah. So like, does God have my whole heart? I think that's the question I want to take away from yeah, this yeah, whole yeah. discussion. No, my reaction is there's idols everywhere. How do I get them out? There's, I'm, I'm freaking out. And I th if not our generation, it probably has more idols than any other generation in, in Earth's history. What do we do? <laughs> Your reaction. We was like, man, I'm going to get rid of all these idols myself. And I would say, you can't. You cannot go crushing these idols all around you. It is the grace of God, the new covenant God, who comes and gives us the strength, gives us new eyes to see, as Jonathan said, and to allow us to get rid of these idols in our life. This is one of the Ten Commandments that are promises that God has given. That's our prayer. Hopefully that's yours. Go to inversebible.org and download the Bible study guide for this arc on the topic of Deuteronomy. We'll see you next week here on Inverse.